We're on. We're on. Welcome, Sean. Today, you're my third guest in the studio. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Been a while. It has indeed. The first question that I want to ask you, obviously I taught you to drive, right? Many moons ago. Sure did. How many moons ago? When (sighs) did you pass your test? Now, let me have a look here. I passed my test the 10th of February 2016. 2016. Just over eight years ago. Eight years ago. Wow. And I remember that was was that that was manual, wasn't it? Yes. Right. So that must have been before I switched to automatic. Or did I do it as well? You done automatic. I was doing both. You taught someone else automatic that passed before me. Six months before me. Yep. Your, your buddies. My sister. Oh Danny. Danny passed her test before I did. And I've never heard the end of it. <laughs> Shh, that's ah, but she we um we done lessons in her car, didn't we? Mm-hmm. That's what it was. She bought a black Peugeot, no. Don't know if it was a Peugeot. I know that she's only passed an automatic. I go. I think. I want to say it was an I go. I think I remember that. I would need to come back to you on that. I I remember that. So was I doing the lessons of the two years at the same time and she passed first? Okay. That's not what you worry about. No. I'm the better driver. Yeah. <laughs> Did you both pass first time? Um... Danny passed first time, I passed second time. Did you? Yeah. Well, I can't remember. second time, begrudgingly, I had you in the back of my car my first time, and you didn't want to be there. (laughs) I've been in the back. Well, I can't remember that. Um, Unfortunately, I do. (laughs) It was a reverser in the corner. My driver's wheel was just... Ever so slightly uh, over, and I was gutted, absolutely gutted. They don't even do that manoeuvre anymore. That that manoeuvre got dropped from the test years ago. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't remember that at all. So you must have just got right back in, mm-hmm. straight back into it. Nailed it the second time. Two minors. Two minors. Mm-hmm. You remember what they were? You still grudge them? No, I, I, I don't know what they were. I only remember why I got a major. Who's your examiner? Can you remember that? No. 2016. It'd have been the old test, isn't it, Petrivi? I think it was a lady. Mm-hmm. Could be. Yeah, uh, a few of them. Um, yeah, reverse in the corner's gone now. Uh, turn of the road's gone. Yeah, three what point. Did they do? Um, so they replaced the those two maneuvers got replaced with bay parking, right? As in, you know, like in a supermarket in between the bays. So you now go forward into a bay and reverse out, and you also go reverse and into a bay and then forward out. So that's like two um, maneuvers, two maneuvers. Parallel park's still in it, right? Oh, there's a new one. I say new, it's years old now, but uh, you'll have seen this on the road. People pulling up on the wrong side of the road, facing oncoming cars, and then reversing back. you never seen learners do this? Nope. You will. You'll start to notice it now, I bet you. Learner cars on the wrong side of the road, facing oncoming cars and reversing back. A couple of car lengths and then moving off again. You're wondering why? Yeah. Well, apparently there must be um, certain amount of people who, in real life, pull up on the right just to go to a shop or something, mm-hmm. and they uh, get back in the car, and then when they're moving off, they've got like 
a car parked in front of them so they can see the oncoming cars. Right, makes sense. So when they're when they're reversing back to get a better view, something's going wrong. And this is getting fed back to the insurance companies and so when that happens, the D V S A say, Oh, okay, we better change the test or include new things in the test. So we get told and I remember getting told this thinking, What? You want us to tell people to pull up on the wrong side of the road and then reverse back and then move off. <laughs> it didn't go down well with instructors because we were just like, this is stupid. If you think of how many times you do it, it does make sense to know how to do it. This is the thing they said, um, they pretty much just said, like, show people how to do it right, but then tell them, don't do it. You know, park on the other side. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, people tend to like that manoeuvre, but still few people fail with it. They've, they've, some, some people think they should stop if another car's coming. Other people think they should keep going. And this is like an ongoing debate between instructors, between um, examiners as well. Some, some didn't mind it and some recommend it. So. Of course, when you were doing reverse parking, if a car was approaching, you had to stop. Yeah. You could only go when they had stopped. That's right. So it's the same, it's the same set, uh, it's the same setup. It's, it's so that you can be concentrating on what you're doing, no missing other things, showing your examiner that you're paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that side of things. Um, how much were your lessons? Can you remember? I like asking this because it's changed so much over the years. I think when we first started, I'd done a block. But it wasn't me that paid for it. It was my granddad. And then after that, oh. Is that in the 20s the movie? I want to say £28. Right, that sounds about right. It's up at like 40 now. Yeah. And potentially go up. Mm. And 50 for evenings and weekends. It's mad. Eh? Thing is, I, w I was £10 an hour when I learned. <laughs> You're old. I am pretty old. <laughs> this is the oldest I've ever been. Probably you too, I would imagine. A little bit older now that you've said it. Than, than you were a minute ago, I suppose. There you go. But, um, yeah, man, it's going to keep going up, probably. Everyone goes up, eh? Fuel. Insurance. Um, do you know what route you got on your test? Was it a tricky route? You remember much about that, no? I know my route. Do you really? And I know why I passed. I got round Rosyth. Ah, uh, okay. Right. The boy from Scythe knows his area. Makes sense. I didn't <laughs> let on when she told me. I didn't say, oh, I know it. All right, cool, I'll just change that. Nah, that would not make a difference. But you should see that on your licence anyway, your address. Oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. But no, I was, that was it. As soon as she said, head down to Rosyth. Hey. Confidence. <laughs> um, Drashi, manoeuvres, what you got? No. Couldn't I tell you? No. Do you remember being nervous more the second time or the first time? <sighs> first time because it was just something that I wanted so badly. But the second time I thought I've been out, I've done extra practice. Mm -hmm. So whatever they throw at me, I'm going to nail this. I like that. I like that. There's something to be said about that sort of attitude, eh? Strong, positive mental attitude. And um, why did you want it so much? I mean, I know everyone wants to pass, but like, some people weren't arsed about it, some people are. Well, I, I was late to the driving game. I was, what, 24? Mm -hmm. um, and why was that? Why were you late to start? Everything i done work-wise, friends, family, they all lived close by. I used to cycle everywhere or right. I got the bus. Edinburgh was the train. You know, there mm -hmm. was just no real need for me to drive. But then I got into it and I realised this is a game changer. Like the freedom, mm -hmm. the access. I could work whatever I want. I could do whatever I want. Um, 
not just in this country, Mm -hmm. other countries. As since passing my test, I have driven in other countries. I've driven on the opposite side of the road. That was one of my questions for you. Um, Let's just jump straight to that one then. Go for it. Where have you driven abroad? Canada. Ah, right. Opposite side of the road, Uh opposite side of the car. Everything's opposite. Although at least the language is English. Mm -hmm. You could read. Mm -hmm. That probably helps a wee bit. And do they have roundabouts? Um, not, not so much, not like we have here. Right. If they have a roundabout, it's a huge one. Right. And then that's it. Mostly traffic lights and junctions and intersections. Yeah, they've got a weird rule as well that if you approach a red light and you're in the right-hand lane, you can turn right. Uh, I've heard this before. At a red light, I freaked. <laughs> I'm at a red light and I've got people tooting at the back of me. Like, you didn't know what to move, guys? Uh, and then the family that we were over visiting said you can turn right it's a red light <laughs> this is my license you're not having me on and then eventually i just done it and i've seen so many people do it and i think that is crazy so that's the equivalent of us here sitting at a controlled junction and a red light but we could turn left yes because it's so near mm-hmm. and did you start doing it then yeah did it feel a bit after odd? after the first time? I thought that, that's it. I've done it. I've got over the fear, Aye. and then just keep going. It's bizarre. Eh? Mm. Different country, different rules. I mean, how are you meant to know that if nobody tells you? No signs. It's really it? well. No filter lights. If I didn't have my family there to tell me, Aye. I would. I'd still be sitting there. <laughs> <at> a red <laughs> light. I wouldn't have moved. This guy's still budging. <laughs> I tell I, I think I've told the story in every podcast yet, but it's about the time I was in Corfu driving with a red filter arrow. What is a red filter arrow? I imagine the same as a green filter arrow. Why is it red? <laughs> like filter arrows, like you can go overriding the red light. That's what we've got here. But a red filter arrow, they go there, no? They maybe say the th- same thing about us with a green filter light. Maybe their red filter arrow is what the Canada rule is, where you can make this turn even though the red lights are. Something. That makes sense. In which case, get on to the Canadians because they yeah. need something like that. Yeah, maybe we've just cracked the case. I don't know. Um, in other places, driven as in far away, Australia. Well, do you like to travel? Really? What was that like? They're on the same side of the road. Yeah, that, that wasn't much different. It was all right. Not much different. What about um, like Spanish countries? Or what? Been to Spanish countries, but not driving. Canada's the only big, huge place that I've driven. See, when you come up to a roundabout and everything's flipped, it's hard work because your brain is working overtime. You're like, this is what I'd normally do. This is where I'd normally enter. You have to reverse everything in your mind. See, apart from the turning right at the red light, everything else I took to. Easy enough. Like water off a duck's back. Hmm. I don't know how. The biggest challenge I had was getting in the car. I'm used to everything being on my left-hand side. (laughs) So I'm now in the passenger seat. Right. Thinking... What's going on? <laughs> that and then getting used to distances um, that I could fit through. Big cars over there, eh? huge. Uh, the um, what is it they called? Uh, I got a people carrier, and they called it a camper van. So when I heard them say, "Can you go get the camper van?" I was like, "Yeah, I didn't order <laughs> no camper van. I ordered." A Dodge people carrier. <laughs> How many uh, seats is it this? It's, uh, seven. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's just the name. That's just what they call it. They call big cars camper vans. That reminds me of the story of, I believe this is a true story of the people that got one of those big camper vans and put it on cruise control. 
and then they just went and made the breakfast or their dinner or something mm-hmm. and they didn't realise that it, the cruise control just done speed it didn't like steer itself and mm-hmm. it, whoosh, off a cliff or something <laughs> and they survived and the thing was written off and then they sued um, I don't know, is it Winnebago or something they sued the company yeah and they won <laughs> they won their case and they got stupid millions of dollars and a brand new you know camper van and then the company had to like rewrite the writing in the handbook that says something like whilst using cruise you must not leave your chair <laughs> yeah right eh? it's a true story I think that's true what old man um so I so driving abroad that's that was an interesting answer that and so I said I wouldn't do it again you you'd be all right you'd be up for it again I'd be straight on it when we were I think teenagers I would pass the test me and two of my mates always had this idea of doing a, a road trip European road trip I don't know if it was hire a car just take one of our cars but get the three of us in the insurance and we would just take turns they've been Somebody's driving, somebody's navigating, somebody's in the back sleep or whatever. And, you know, Spain and France and Germany and just go through, like... It sounded awesome. But... Until I drove abroad. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, never again. So... I don't know, maybe... Maybe when I'm... I just... I would rather be in a bus. Enjoy the scenery. Really? And just, yeah, just... I guess it's because of my job. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I suppose. Yeah. You know, I'm in charge all day of safety, and I can't. You know, I can't just switch off. And whereas if I'm on a bus, I can just sit and watch my phone or somebody else's problem. You know. That's true. I mean, driving for me is a luxury. For you, it's a business. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. I still enjoy. I mean, I enjoy driving, but it's nice. To, I mean, on the very rare occasion that I've got a 19 bus for here up to the town. For whatever reason, if I'm, I don't know, a night out or something, I like it. I like, I, there's just something different about, like, you do the driving bus driver, I'll sit back, chill. Why not a taxi? Mm, cheapskate. I, honestly, I don't mind the bus. I mean, they get right in the doorstep, bus stops there. Especially if you get the one that just goes straight up the town, eh? Mm. Some awkward about taxi drivers, where you don't have to, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you need to have that conversation. <laughs> Bus, you just got on with the headphones. Exactly. Live right. your life. It's a social awkwardness thing, I think. Just sit in the bus and just go with it. That's it. You can't talk to a taxi driver, but you'll do a podcast. That's weird, That's eh? That's it, mate. That's make a, that makes sense. I know, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird place. Um, right, tell me this. Passing your driving test changed your life. Changes most people's life. Um, what was the first car you got? Because everyone loves and remembers their first car. Eh? Oh, I remember it. It was a Fiat Punto. Nice. How old was that? A new one? Or? It was seven. Mm-hmm. Still remember the Reg. <laughs> I, I had a Punto. I liked the Punto. 2012, I had a Punto. Any, any hassle with it? Um, yeah, after, <laughs> after about eight, eight, nine months, the exhaust fell off it. Yeah. Ah, uh, trouble. Um, so I got one of my mates to do like a makeshift, like wire, just to hang it. Um, so I could take it to the dealership and trade it in. Right. And so move on to another one. Moved on to a brand new Corsa Energy. Energy. Zero, zero miles. Oh, nice. What's energy? The trim model or the level? Um, I don't know. I was just sold on the price and the interior. Aye. I loved it. It had heated seats, heated steering wheel. First time I've ever experienced a heated steering wheel. It's City steering as well. That, that was right. a great mm-hmm. thing. Uh, heated seats and heated steering was amazing once you have it you don't want to go back 
and the windscreen, Aye. front and back. Aye. The um, the leaf, the Nissan, it's up there. Um, you can do it for your phone. You can heat it up for your phone. And does it all? And um, that's just a bunch of nonsense. That what's funny is when it's winter and the neighbours are scratched. <sighs> Right. Sitting there with a cup of tea. You, you just, you get your phone and you, and in five minutes it's done, eh? But you get in the car, it's too hot. Oh, that's, that's a real issue, mate. You've got to put the window down a wee bit. Oh. How the other half live? <laughs> I've done my time. You've done with, your time. You're with, still doing your time. With cars that don't, you know, don't go up hills. Like my first car didn't go up a hill. No. That needed a good run at it. It didn't start when it was cold, which was rubbish because I used to work late at night and then come out in the cold and couldn't get to start. It's like a two hundred pound Fiesta. Got you from A to B. I was seventeen. Yeah, I was stuck at B a few times. Happens to the best of us, mate. Then I bought a Cavalier, which was a lovely upgrade. I had like power steering. <laughs> I had electric windows. I had uh, central locking. All things that come as standard <laughs> nowadays. Back in the day, this was cool. If you didn't have it, it was normal. If you had it, it was special. So that was a nice wee upgrade. My Fun. pal's got a brand new Micra. I love this wee thing. I think it's fantastic. But when I sit in the back, no, still got winding. Brand new car, still got winding. I give her so much hassle for it. I'm like, who needs the gym? Wind and windows. Wind down windows, honestly, mate. On a new car. It's, uh, it's fantastic. I thought that was a thing of the part. I thought that was like three wheelers. You never see that anymore. Reliant Robins. How it's a new car, did you say? Mm-hmm. Nissan. Mm-hmm. Hmm? My one's I was gonna say my one doesn't have that. Everything else about it, it's fantastic. Micros have changed. The micro looks a lot like the leaf, doesn't it, or the new one? Uh, more sporty. Ah, uh, yeah, it's sporty looking things. Eh? Mm-hmm. Um, so what? What? Sh- what? How many cars have you had? And what's your history? Um, so I went Punto, Corsa. Then, as I was getting close to my time being up with the Corsa, I thought, getting a bit older now, don't want to have that car you can see at the McDonald's drive-through. So I thought. I'll get something a bit beefier that's got a bit more room. So I got a mocha. Right. Which is basically the Corsa, but on stilts. Uh huh. Yes. Mm hmm. And this is the best car I've ever had in my life. Is that the one you've got? That you no, can... no, that's a, that's a courtesy car I've got out there. Oh. Someone buff into the front of me. Oh, man. Mm. You hurt? Oh, no, I was in, I was in the shop. Right. They left their details on my car. Nice Very enough. good of them. Very good of them. Humanity restored. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. Mm. But then they just took off. And... Yeah, it was late at the night. Um, I didn't realise. Um, and my girlfriend said to me, there's something on your windscreen. And I was like, oh, that's not a parking ticket. It better not be. <laughs> Can it be outside the co-op? No danger. Um, and yeah, I'd, I read it and I messaged I was like, just had this note. Everything okay? She said, I've reversed into your car. Let me know if there's any damage. And I had a look. It was late at night. I couldn't really see anything. Um, and then the next day in the morning, big hole in the front of my grill. And my engine management light came on. Massive roar coming from the engine. I thought, oh, I'm so sorry to tell you this. <laughs> But you're more than welcome to come out and inspect the car. And then I went through her insurance. Yeah. Oh, fair play here, though. Hey, that would have been not very nice if you had just mm. left you like that. You got CCTV in it or something? I've not had a look at that. Um, but she's accepted liability. Oh, so, good. You know. Fair play there. Mm. Is she local? Aye, um, and shoes is a nightmare because for the rest of your life, or at least for the for the next I don't know how many years you'll get calls. Oh, you were in an accident. 
because it goes on some sort of database, some sort of record of, oh, you know, we can get you compensation. I don't know what accent that is. I still get calls um, from when my Corsa got smashed into. So nippy. 18 wheeler. 18 wheeler? Mm-hmm. Um, the roundabout, as if you're coming off for the Edinburgh airport. Uh huh. I was going round that, and big truck outside of me. He was trying to get onto the bypass. Didn't see me. Whack. Sent me a three sixty on top of that roundabout. Jesus. Oh, that's scary. Uh huh. I got out of the car in shock, <laughs> and he was shouting and screaming. He was like, "You're in the wrong lane." And I was like, "Let's take a second and look at those road markings." <laughs> and he looked, and he was like, "I am so sorry." I was like, it's fine. I'm fine. You're fine. That's all that matters. Oh. Everything else is superficial. Wow. The point kicking and screaming. What's done is done. Can't be changed. And he took full, full responsibility to get car fixed, or mm-hmm. was that a write off? No, no, got it fixed. All right. Yeah. Uh, and then it was just a couple months after that I traded it in. Mm hmm. Oh, that's decent. Any other? No, that's me. As soon as I get my mocker back, mm-hmm. done. That's I've no finance on it, um, so I will have it for as long as it lives. What is your um, dream car? Uh, Sixty-seven Mustang. Don't even need to think about it. But I'll never have one. I never say never. It's not feasible here. Too big. Just feel. Wouldn't go in corners. Oh, sideways. <laughs> but just the cost of petrol, cost of insurance. It just uh, having it would just be out of greed and nothing else. More designed to like the state say with the big straight roads and that. Mm-hmm. Not hitting speed bumps every ten seconds. Uh, mm-hmm. Roads are terrible here, do you? Unfortunately. Um what about EVs, electric cars? Never had one, never thought we'd get one. Driven one. Mum had one as a courtesy. It was a Corsa. Oh, yeah. Best thing I've ever been in. Spicy. Oh, so good. I don't like that you can't hear them. <laughs> um, I'm yeah, just waiting stealthy. on one, taking my ankles. You know, that's it's going to happen one day. But I just, I love, I've never been a big fan of like boy race cars. Like big, loud Amazing. engines. Mm-hmm. Which is ironic because I love the 67 Mustang and you didn't get much louder than that as a <laughs> stock car. Yeah. But something about having that smooth quietness, you just want to have a drive and think, oh, here you go. Aye. I, I, I got my first electric in 2018 and I drove it and I just thought, oh, I'm going to go back to It's changed. Aye. That was a game changer. The... The Leaf. My dad told me about this car. I think I mentioned this the other day as well. My dad told me about this car that you can heat up through your phone. Didn't know it was electric. Didn't know it was a Nissan. I was like, you can heat it up through your phone? Oh. Sold. I don't know what kind of car it is, but I want it. <laughs> Turns out it was the electric. Then the first Leaf I got was smaller battery. It didn't do as many miles. So I think I had about a year or something and then I traded it and got the bigger battery. But yeah, the nice like that. I think I'm gonna to have to change that one soon because that one will almost be well, I'm coming up for five years old at the end of this year. It's not like a mobile phone, mate. But the miles that we do um, add up a lot, and like you either keep it and it just turns into a car with loads of miles, or you sell it on before it gets too big. Mm-hmm. But someone. Uh, Someone was telling me about an older version of this Leaf, the first generation. It was a ta- I think it was a taxi driver. It does four four hundred thousand miles. We used to talk about diesels being, you know, like cars that'll just run forever and do a hundred thousand miles. They're electric cars because there's no moving parts. There. There's no it's just easy to maintain. It. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what to get next. You think you go, big boy? Tesla. Oh, every day I think about it. 
every day. <laughs> every day I see what, and I'm like, have you been in one? Yeah. Um, so I've driven in a Model S. It was a really nice. Put your really, foot down. Aye. Mm. Aye, it's, it's different. It's different. It's so weird. It's fast. Um, I've been in a Model 3 that my friend had. It was... Uh, SUV? Nice. Is, that uh, the, is that the big one? No, that's the Y or the X. The 3 is like the smaller one. Like the, the cheaper one, basically. Right. Um, the new Model 3 doesn't have indicator stocks. Right. What does it have instead? Um, well, on the wheel, it's got buttons. Just like how you've got volume buttons, right? You've got left and right indicator, on and off. So it's just a button. So if you imagine holding a wheel, you want to signal left, just push left button on, left button off, right on, right off. The thing is, when you turn the wheel, those buttons turn and end up on the other side, upside down. Oh, that's a design flaw, that. For what I've read... In the comments of people who've done it, it just takes a wee bit of getting used to. So I would imagine you and I would get used to it. We just know where your buttons were. Teaching people to drive in it, I think I would spend all day saying that's the wrong button. It's upside down, it's over there now. <laughs> and it doesn't have a gear selector. Is it all on the screen? Even, you don't even need that. The car just knows which way you want to go. You're lying. I swear. You're lying. I swear. The new Model 3 just knows what gear you want. Forward or backwards. And, if, and, and it just chooses it for you, right? So, in th and there's even a start button. You get, you put your bum on the chair, you shut the door, and you accelerate to go, right? You should obviously check that it's in the right gear that you want. So, you're in your driveway. You get in the car. Yep. Whoosh. Well, the thing is, it's smart enough to know that there's a wall in front of you. Don't trust that. Don't trust that. I don't think I'd trust it initially, but I think as part of your normal checks that you would do, you know, you'd check, is it in the right gear? Right? And I, this is what makes me laugh. The people that have bought this car and have driven it for ages, right? By the way, if it's in the wrong, if it's wrong, you just swipe on the screen and it goes into other gear. Right, so there is a manual no selection. Bit. Right, yeah. okay. But people say that, like, I don't know, 90% of the time it just is right. Because it just knows, it knows what's in front of you, it knows what's behind you. It's just smart. Big brother. Aye, it just knows, right? Before, what I think is hilarious is the people that have driven it and then, then they get back into a traditional car where you have to tell it what gear you want. Oh, don't tell me the crash. They don't crash, they're just like, oh, it feels so <laughs> extra work to do. But this is what the people say, which makes me think you would get used to it. Sit down, accelerate. The more I think about things in life, the more I realise humanity is becoming lazier and lazier and well, lazier. <clears throat> Everything's getting invented for us to do less work. You might be right. You might be right. But... Remember, we didn't have cars before. We had horses. Mm -hmm. And you need someone to make a change. You know? well, back then, the poor had horses and the rich had cars. But before the cars, everyone had a horse, right? Mm. And there's a saying that says, if you say to the people, what do you want? They would say, faster horses. But someone has to come along and say, that's not what you want. This is what you want. It's a car. You know, so that's why I think, uh, like your phone, mm -hmm. whatever phone you've got, you don't have a headphone socket anymore, right? No, Bluetooth. But everyone moaned when that got taken away, right? Everyone moaned. Mm -hmm. Apple just went, you don't need it, right? You don't need it, Bluetooth. And everyone went, oh, right, rough. So the people, I think, sometimes just need to be told. Here's what you need. It's like, what's the other thing that was an example? Um, you buy a laptop, right? Big fancy Apple laptop. Costs like two grand or something. And it didn't have a DVD drive. Mm -hmm. This was like 
a massive amount of money and you wouldn't have getting a DVD drive. Apple said to the people, you don't need it. Everything's on demand. Just download it. And the people went, oh, okay. I suppose, yeah. So yeah. sometimes I think you put, the people need to be told, like a lump at, this is the future. There's no stocks. The car will just know what you want. And people will moan, you know, and then people will be like, yeah, these old fashioned cars where you've got muck about with gears and that. There's something about changing gears, though. I just, you feel in complete control of the car. How much. You're a manual driver. Yeah, but that courtesy car uh-huh. is automatic, right? right? And I love it. See, when I'm at traffic, uh-huh. it's fantastic. But there's just something about changing gear. I know when I'm changing, right? I can hear it. I can feel it. I know when I'm doing it. The automatic just does it when it wants. Um, <clears throat> ah, so that's the difference between petrol and diesel automatics and EVs. EV, you don't notice. Gear. There's no gear changes. There's no physical. You don't hear or feel anything. There's no vibrations. There's nothing. But it's a petrol or diesel automatic. You feel. And, and like you said, sometimes it does it at a different it's time. Like a lag. That's right. It would do it different from what you would do, eh? Mm-hmm. So I think I would agree with you on that, but with EVs, who wants to muck about with gears? I get it. You know, I do. And uh, Elon says we'll not have wheels soon and cars. Mm-hmm. Like things were flying. Well, well, yeah. If it was up to him, we wouldn't be on Earth. We'd be at Mars. Mm-hmm. But again, he's the guy that needs to tell us he's doing it wrong. This is the wrong planet. Come over here, come over to this planet. That guy was created in a lab. <laughs> it was. He's just different. Maybe he's been sent back here to save us. Who sent him back? Himself. I bet he did. Mm-hmm. Man's a Terminator. But he's a good guy, I think. Mm-hmm. I'm Team Elon. And uh, a lot of people are now. It's funny. I like the way he thinks. He, he's a forward thinker. Yeah. Uh, what's the name for it? A long-term minist. He believes in um, the future of humanity thousands of years from now. Mm-hmm. Let's do good for them. Long past himself. Yeah. He'll be there. He's already there. He might be there. Telling you, mate. Um, I'm a big Elon fan. I think he's one of the good guys. Not everyone agrees with me. My brother, Craig, shout out if you're watching. He doesn't agree. That's it. But people will just see billions, billions, billions. Why I don't think he. he I, I don't think Elon thinks of himself as a as a rich billionaire. Like I think he, you know, I don't know. I don't think money's his main objective. He's not got a big multi million pound super yacht. He's not kicking about the world in that. He's grafting constantly. I've He's seen, an engineer. Eh? Oh, I've seen videos about him sleeping in porter cabins. For Aye, two right. hours and then just going back to work. Aye, is it is an engineer? He's... Who knows? Eh? Maybe he's the savior of humanity. Maybe he's just an evil billionaire. I don't know. But I'm Team Elon. Um, right. Tell me, outside the um your work and stuff, hobbies. What do you like to do? Used to play a lot of football when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Older, body's falling to bits. <laughs> How old are you now? 31. 31 now. Honestly, mate, it's downhill. It's just, it's nothing but hurt feelings when I think about football now. You don't play at all now, no? I've not kicked a ball in a year, year and a half. What about Jimmy? You're yeah. You're tanking up? Yeah, I'm doing that. It's, it's a lot easier than football. I've not got tr- people trying to kick me in the gym. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, snooker. Play a lot of snooker. Really? Mm. Where'd you play? Up in the ballroom. Right. Um, they must get a game. Me, me and my pal uh, try to play as often as we can. Um, we've been as far as like Edinburgh. Um, we played in a, an old gentleman's club. No nonsense. You were in, you played snooker. That was it. And nice and quiet. Oh, this place was the best. Mm-hmm. It was like old fashioned, but it's like, you were there for that. Snooker. Very good at it. That's as good as 
any average player can be. You know what I mean? A break of eight. It's a good day when you get a break of eight, mate. It's a good day. A red and a black. <laughs> a red and a black. <laughs> First red goes in. That one four seven's on. A twelve, a twelve foot is a long table, eh? And if you're a millimetre out, yep. That, oh, mm. hurts. I got my eyes lasered years ago, and I remember playing before. With, I can't remember. I had glasses. Or I didn't bother wearing them. But uh, no, you never had glasses when we were doing lessons. I think I must have got it done before then. I can't remember. But uh, what a difference it makes we don't we see. <laughs> 12 feet down the table, you can see the reds. It's good. But I know I must get a game sometime. Do you know I played in the side? It's not good to know. The 147 club. No. Yeah, I stick to the ballroom. That's what I know. That's what I know. <laughs> Comfortable. <laughs> um, golf as well. There was a golf day today. I missed out on one of the driving instructors. Um, we do this every three months or so. What about? Uh, Mucker Golf Club. Right. And uh, this week, today, I started an intensive driving course. Started this morning, runs for, finishes on Friday, we're test. So I missed it on the golf tournament today. But, uh, never won. Enjoy it though. I golf and snooker, good hobbies. It's done the PlayStation Xbox. PlayStation, yep. PS5. Got the files, of course. As soon as it come out. Uh-huh. Heart when I bought it. Uh-huh. It's the first games console I've ever bought for myself personally. Right. Everything else has been Christmas. Parents. Did you uh, get the digital one or the nope. disc? Disc. Yep. Go big or go home. <laughs> I've got the uh, PS5. I've found this uh, snooker. Well, it's a pool game, but you can play snooker in it. It's brilliant. What, what's... Can we say what it's called? Yeah. Pool Nation, I think. Pool Nation. I think it's Pool Nation. I need to check that. One of my um, mates told me to download it. It was £7 and it was on sale. Don't you like £2? There you go. I'm addicted to it. I play it all the time. Really? The graphics are beautiful. Seeing like 4K and you zoom right into the balls it is ultra realistic. And I know you don't play this game for graphics, but I, I like that. Play for big balls on the TV? Mate. Aye. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Golf. That's something. I used to play a lot of FIFA. Mm-hmm. Right. But I went through controllers. <laughs> mate, honestly. I'd, FIFA Rage. It mm-hmm. was a thing. It's real. No, oh, it's real. Right. But I just can't do this anymore i'm not a child and then when i got the ps5 realized how much is in the actual controller i'm not breaking this they're smart the controllers eh? you need to update them mm-hmm. the trigger the the triggers have got some amazing feedback here with different things, feedback yeah adaptive triggers yeah unbelievable when i was uh when i was younger you remember iss it was always like pre-evolution i mm. i was playing that with my mate uh Toddy. Graham Toddy. They had they didn't have the license for the names. So the names That's were all right. jumbled, weren't they? K- yeah. Konami or something. Yeah. That's right. Uh FIFA had it, but they didn't they didn't have the license or something. But um oh, he, I got so frustrated. One day I took the disc out. I went and got a golf club for my room and I battered the disc rotten. Cause it kept like, you know, like you ever feel like the game's against you? Mm-hmm. You know, like mm. Mm-hmm. So that was that. The disc got it, and then I didn't buy it again. <laughs> you live, you learn, mate. I stopped playing FIFA. Um, golf. Wait, but golf on the PS5? Um, PGA? No, there's two, isn't there? There's. There used to be the Tiger Woods and the Rory Macro mm-hmm. Roy. Now you've got the PGA Tour. Uh huh. And there's another one. Uh, I think it's the Masters. Is that the one you've got? No, I have PGA Tour. I need to get your online tag. Um, last question. Go for it. What's your future plans? Future plans, five years down the line. <clears throat> A question I keep getting asked since you've put it in my head and I put it into everyone else's head. When are you going to become a driving instructor? 
I have asked you this a few times. And uh, since since you've asked me, and I've mentioned it to friends and family, I even got asked today after the football. So when are you going to be a driving instructor? <laughs> you asked you that? At, uh, my pal Scott. <laughs> Out of the blue. Um, it's still something that you fancy? Yes, it is. Um, but in my head, I'm just trying to outweigh pros, cons. Uh, and uh, I, I just keep juggling and then I think, is it going to be worth me paying for all the lessons? Because what if I do it? And then I don't like being a driving instructor. But then I think, shut up, you're a people person. So what should we do? Sit in the back of my car for a couple of lessons. People won't mind. Just watch, you know, just observe. Think to yourself, is this the kind of thing I would want to do? Or does that sound, you know, like, does this look, would I hate this? I suppose it's like you with this podcast. If I don't try it, yeah, I'll never know. The itch will always be there if you don't scratch it. That's a saying that I made up. Coined. Yeah. I would, I can see that in, in inverted commas with my name under it. It'll forever be itchy. Let's hope that's not the quote. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll work on the quote. Yeah. But <laughs> rewrite that. I'll rewrite. I'll, yeah. <laughs> It'll forever be itchy. <laughs> Gary Russell. <laughs> 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 but you know, not if you get a good scratch, it'll be fine. This is, this is what it did in life. That's what it's all about. The thing is, you get what's done as a pink badge, a training badge, yes. right? Which I guess is designed for a few things. It's designed to find out if you like the job. Mm -hmm. You know, you're 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 earning as you're learning. And what you earn from being on a pink badge would cover all your training costs well and truly. So in theory, you can get to the end of your pink badge, and even if you didn't want it, you're up more than you're down. And if you manage to do that round about your current job, you've lost nothing. You've just scratched a big old itch. It does make sense. And it's something that just... It doesn't go away. It's just boring a hole in my head. Just constantly, it's, you've planted a seed. <laughs> you really have. I'm a seed planter. Jamie, <laughs> who Gary, is... Gary Russell. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to decorate this place. <laughs> Famous <laughs> quotes. <laughs> I'm just going to write them a little bit. <laughs> well, look, Jamie, who does my... Um, at the moment, he's doing automatic lessons for mm -hmm. me. I taught him to drive years ago. I'm going to say eight years ago, seven eight years ago, I planted the seed. And look up now, he came back years later saying, right, train up, ready. He loves it. I've got some questions for you. Okay. You did ask me to think of some. Fire away. So... When we first met, yes, you were with Max Pass. Yes. How does it feel going from Max Pass to where you are now, owning your own business? Oh well, um, I think I'll, I think I'll always be grateful for how I got started with Mike because he brought me in, he showed me the ropes, but I knew that I wanted control of things. You know, you kind of do that if you work for someone else. You don't want to work for the man, you want to be the man. Yeah, like I had a, I had, I had a vision of, of something big. Didn't know what. But I just know, I knew that I needed to sort of... Plus, I think it's fair to say that I'm a bit geekier than Mike and I'm a bit more sort of like tech savvy. I think Mike will admit that. And, and I could do things that are... Like, for example, if I got somebody through their test, I wanted that picture online within an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think still got the, the picture of me. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted control of my own, you know what I mean? I didn't want to sort of say to somebody, can you update this picture for me? And then they have to sort of speak to their, 
I don't know, web design guy, and then three weeks later it appears. Like, I just wanted that control side of things, you know. So that's that was, like, a big part of it. And, yeah, I mean, it, it, I remember Mike saying to me, it's like, it's not easy if you go on your own and, you know, but I just said, well, I'm going to try. And how, how do you feel being on your own? Is it, do you ever look back and think, I've made the right decision here? Um, I never look back and think I'd want to work um, for someone because I like being you know, in charge of things and building things. But there's some days when you get hassles where like, like you get a website, an email, somebody's attacking your website or somebody's, you know, hacking your, you know, things that you've got to fix. Hassle like that, whereas if you work for a franchise or something, they would fix it. You know yeah. what I mean? <clears throat> so there's the odd occasion where you feel like you've just got too much. Um, but a big change happened recently when I got Donna on my wife to be our office manager and she took away all the um, admin stuff. That's her job now. I don't do any of that, which is amazing for a lot me. Of weight off the shoulders. Yeah, man. Because I was, that was like a full time job in itself. And then I'm doing the driving, which is a full time, and I'm trying to make YouTube channel and it's too much. So I love the fact that I've got her doing that. She's good at what she does. She can sp she can devote more time to sort of customer service than I could. Mm -hmm. So if, as a company, it's good to. Be, you know, having, having that kind of delegation. And again, that's just something that comes with being able to have your own thing. You can build it the way you want it built, you know. Yeah, good question. No, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm thankful for bringing me in, but uh, I wouldn't want to go back. What is your five-year plan? You've asked me, I'm flipping it to you. Five-year plan. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to be a hopeful and optimistic, right? Yep. What are you aiming for? Um, YouTube partnership, monetization through our channel, um, the podcast growing arms and legs and looking to do that more often. Mm -hmm. And probably going more down the route of training instructors to be instructors. Right. Rather than driving an instructor and learners as in for me mm -hmm. my team that i've got again you've got the delegation of donna's doing the admin got instructors doing the manual instructors doing the auto i'd like to maybe focus on doing the training of instructors and the youtube side of things so you know this could be my studio that i work from home most of the days or on monday i'm out doing training in the car and then rest of the days I'm doing this kind of thing that would be cool that's you know what, what I mean? we're aiming for yeah but I'd also like to build the team to the point where I've got <laughs> someone else so Sean come on board you know get you qualified how would you like to do some training for you know your pal Xander or Mark or whoever mm -hmm. you know however the lads are getting on maybe they want to be instructors you train them up Bring them in. Look after them. You're the mentor. You know what I mean? Delegate down like that. How would you feel going from grafting every day, out, driving, teaching, to then slowly stepping back, stepping back, stepping back? Um, I think it'd be pretty cool. I mean, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I could just sit in here with my pants and T-shirt you know what I mean? Trying to image it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying it. <laughs> Trying my best. This is a PG friendly podcast. No. All right. So <laughs> no, that's not where we're going. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It was an election day. That's totally not where I thought we were going with it. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Um, I never got to do this. At the beginning. I suppose you can. You can edit it in after. I'll edit that in. Um, any more questions? Good questions. 
What made you want to get into driving? As an instructor? Mm-hmm. Oh, e- easy. Um, Is it about the car? Is it about the teaching? Is it about the people? Uh, uh, it was my first It was my first driving lesson with my instructor, Gordon, um, on my 17th birthday. Where was your first lesson? Because I remember where mine was. Um, yours would be done at the dockyard. Park Road. Oh, was it Park Road within mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I stayed in Cowdenmeath at the time. He came to the door, picked me up, at, and then I think it was Crossgates we went up to, and then up to Moss Morden and back to Cowdenmeath, I think. It's a big loop. Mm-hmm. I just remember, like, he had this, it was a brand new Fiesta. This is in the year 2000. It probably did have, oh, I it probably did, but it was brand new. And um, it was, it was, it was a nice car. And I and he, I don't know, he just had his wee fleece on, you know. He had his wee fleece on. He, he just looked so comfy in his wee car. My instructor, he's an older guy, Gordon, and he, he'd, you know, he's nice enough. And I just remember thinking, oh, that's a cool wee job. That just teaching people, you know, a life skill. You you're changing their life. I mean, I, I, what am I, 40? Passed when I was 17. Oh, you are, 40. Uh, 23 years ago, I passed my test. Is that right? 23 years ago? 24 years ago? Six. Wait, you were what, 18? 17. 17. Mm-hmm. 23 years ago. So, uh, yes. And uh, I, I just thought, that's cool. I like that, I like that. And then, and then... So that was the seed planted, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I never, maybe the same as you. Maybe it was just a bit of like putting it, putting it off, you know. Like always wanted to, but I just life got in the way, you know. Um, and then as fate would have it, again, I think I told this other, on another podcast, but it was my job in the bank came to an end, and we got told that we needed to take our money and leave. And um, got a, f- yeah. got a fair old lump sum and I had like a whole year of just, you know, pissing about. I had money in the bank because of the thing and I had money for training and it's great. It was a great year. Played loads of PlayStation, went out at night drinking. I was at the gym. I was probably at my fittest doing the training during the day. This was 2010. Nine. 2009. Then qualified, two thousand and ten. Two thousand and ten. You want to know what I done in two thousand and ten? <laughs> I left school. <laughs> That's it. I, I only know that because I come across my leavers jumper last night. Is that right? Two thousand and ten. Yeah, two thousand and ten. There you go. How does that make you feel, mate? <sighs> Man, I feel old all the time in this job. I had a girl in the car who says to me. Um, we were up in the Ken Matalan and the retail, like, ah, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Home Bargains or something. Home Bargains was there, I think. And I I was sitting sent here, a young girl, and I was sitting sent here. Uh, I, I, I used to like the shop it was before, and she was like, What shop was it before? And I was like, It was Comet. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comic, kind of like Curry's kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, got you. Got exactly. you. I used to buy cameras and laptops and mm-hmm. shit. And, I, and she went, what's Comic? <laughs> and I went, oh, come on. You know, not, she was like, no, no, no. I was like, it's like, no, I said, it's like uh, uh, Dixon's. <laughs> what's Dixon's? Oh, my so that, that made me feel really, really old. What's, what's, what's Comet? What's Dixon's? <laughs> I've got one for you. Netflix. Uh-huh. We all know what Netflix is now. Uh-huh. Right? Years ago, probably about a decade ago, actually. A decade, right? Uh huh. Someone come to my door. People come try and sell you stuff. This guy signed me up to Netflix. He said, movies games we've got it you go online you tell us what you want 
And we ship it out to you. Oh, uh, we post it. We post the DVDs, Xbox games. And now, now they don't do that. Now everything's just, well, it's just movies and TV shows. Is that what it used to be before it was? Yep. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yep. But, right, see, this goes back to my point. Back then, you probably thought, oh, great idea. I'll, I'll, I'll take this film. I'm going to wait three days. Come on. Or next day delivery, maybe. Yeah. Go wait. Now, you watch something that's there. Demand instantly. Things get better. Yeah, but you're spoiled with choice. Yep. Let's go back to blockbusters, mate. Oh, I remember the uh -huh. days. Uh, just down the road. Uh, I remember the days. You know, that's... You don't have that anymore. Rent a game, go home, complete it, take it back. That's it. You don't need to play it anymore. <laughs> Didn't need to download games back then. But now PS... One of the PS things lets you do a wee trial, eh? Two hour trial. Uh, yeah, not every game, though. Not every game. Mm -hmm. I've seen a couple of games that have, you can trial, but VHS, DVD, Blu-ray. Blu-ray was older age. And then 3D TVs. Remember, they were a flop. Yeah, it's a shame. Eh? They had so much potential. But nobody wants to wear glasses. Oh, no one. They needed to um, invent it without the glasses, but nothing else doable. There's always a limitation. Unless you're Elon and you'll find a way around it. <laughs> Would it surprise me? Team Elon. Well, I think we've covered what we need to cover, you know. Mm. So what that means... Means I'm gonna get outside and stop sweating in here. That means it's time for no. jingle, mate. Is that it? Like my jingle board. Colourful. Uh, I've not actually had too much to play about with this. Too loud. A wee bit. <laughs> right, Sean, thank you so much, my man. Um, I'll get this done. You'll be officially episode three. Thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. We're out. We're out.